we're back. This is the Diagnose Bravo podcast with Demi. Hi, I'm Maureen. And today our episode is titled Wig Shift because we will be talking about some of Bravo's most iconic fights. Um, We'll be getting into it. We have our top three most iconic fights. Of course, there are a ton more than that, but these are ones that we really feel like shifted um shifted their perspective franchises so let's get into it yeah i'm excited because every time we watch these it's always uh, an experience and the main factor and we'll continue talking about this as we go through each fight is alcohol why Ooh, yeah <laughs> why these people keep drinking and trying to have these serious conversations i will never understand but there so are bad. It's terrible. There are two things that should not go together with serious conversations in the Bravo world: alcohol and boat rides. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Every time they're on water, it's an experience. Oh my God! You just said boat ride, and I just flashed back to when Cynthia and, and Portia. No, not oh, even funny. when Cynthia and Portia were on the boat, and Cynthia kicked her in the stomach. Kicked the shit I was out of her. like. Oh God, that was because it didn't need to go that way. Cynthia's not that type of chick, so. Uh, but now we're getting away from the three that we chose. We have a set <laughs> list. We're gonna talk about the set list. We're not gonna talk about anything else. That's a fair honorable mention because that part is. is wild. That or, was like, Salt Lake City when fucking Jen Shaw threw Angie K shoes in the shoes water. Shoes onto the water. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shoes are floating. Lord and, Jesus. And production stay being petty because it was so it was just the way that they had the arrow pointing to the shoes, like <laughs> educated shoes, and her shoes are just bobbing down the river. Like, what kind of garbage is this? <laughs> just floating. I oh, love it. God. They're the best fly on the wall. Um, they really are. They really are. <laughs> it's a good time. So, first fight that comes to mind for me is. Real Housewife of New Jersey, and when Joe Judice or Joe Judice Judice yeah is fighting Joe Gorga, Oof. um, <laughs> for context, I guess I okay. So some things that I want to cover in terms of these fights are definitely context because they're not as they're so layered. I feel like especially yeah. in the New Jersey realm because they're yeah. all their family dynamic is constantly strained. Um, and there, it's the only like housewife series where like damn near everybody's related to each other. Mm-hmm. Like, and even when they weren't, it's like, oh, this is my sister in law, my brother in law, and she married my brother, and da 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 da. Like, everybody was related somehow. And even when it wasn't actual relations, it was like, oh, she's the godparent to my to my daughter and stuff like that. So they were really really commingled, and I feel like it made for a very very messy time. Yeah. Because I, I don't know if it would be the Real Housewife of New Jersey's or as much as like the Manzo, Gorga, Judice family show. Facts. <laughs> and whatever Kathy's last name was. <laughs> yes, whatever Kathy's last name Kathy was. Kathy and Rosie. <laughs> Kathy and Rosie. I love Rosie. She's Rosie so was lit. And Rosie her. in this scene, you could tell she was just stressed. So for context, that this yeah. point, the family dynamic is at a high tension point. Mm-hmm. They go on this trip as a retreat to do conflict resolution with these two conflict resolution advisors that try to do <laughs> team building of uh, their strategies. Honestly, did they, did they try to do team building? I don't think so. They did not do the good job at the team building. I think they no. got through one activity before tension started rising again. And that's because contextually, the issue isn't um them needing team building the issue low key high key is Teresa at this point yeah. she's gossiping around to everybody she's trying to segregate the group to mm-hmm. uh pro Teresa or pro or team Melissa and because of that so many people were thrown in um and the husbands were a part of that because at the end of the day Joe Gorga is Teresa Judice's brother Mm-hmm. Um, Melissa Gorga is Joe Gorga's wife, and then mm-hmm. there's Joe DJ, who is Teresa's husband. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's confusing saying Joe and Joe because they both have you know Joe in there. Um, so we'll, we'll try people, to... when I was um when I was trying to figure out who we we're going to talk about, mm-hmm. people were referring um to Joe Judice as Juicy Joe, 
and <laughs> I really like the name Juicy Joe. Yes. So I feel like maybe we should refer to him as Juicy Joe. <laughs> I like it. Juicy Joe it is. He's a thickums and we stand the thickums on this podcast. Yeah, he looks a little cuddly. Mm -hmm. um, or not a little, a lot of cuddly. I love that. Yes. But yes, Juicy Joe, I guess for context in this scene, has stepped out. And Joe Gorga is having a, a conversation with Teresa. And Teresa's like, grow a set of balls, stick with your blood. And Joe Gorga calls her scum. Like, I'm not sticking with scum like you. That's not, that's not a part of me. And at this point, Teresa had started all these rumors about Melissa. Teresa had friends that were talking dancer, about Melissa. She was a stripper. Yes. Mm -hmm. That she she came on the show only to copy Teresa. She was mm -hmm. hell bent on the fact that Melissa was trying to copy her life, mm -hmm. which I thought was very selfish. I think Teresa thinks everything is about her mm -hmm. at this at, in this in this point of the show, which is pretty early on. Um, but I felt really bad for the conflict resolution people because once joe was stepping out and joe and Teresa was arguing and he called her scum nobody was intervening everyone was just watching stuck <laughs> that was not Wildly the conflict stuck. resolution their it team was building. not it was <laughs> not and that i don't recall that lady's name but there is that poor white lady who was trying who was a part of the conflict resolution team mm -hmm. and you could just see on her face and she's like i don't know what to do they didn't teach this in the manual <laughs> like, <laughs> this wasn't a part of the script and she's just standing there like oh my god <laughs> like what is happening they were shook they were so they shook. were shook. They were like, "This is not in section nineteen of the manual. How to break nope. up physical altercations." No, nope. that altercation happened quickly. So he calls it. Um, Teresa gets upset. Teresa runs out to her husband, Joe, Juicy Joe, outside, and she's like, "He called me scum. I'm ready to go." And Richie saw Joe, Juicy Joe, wrote, coming forward, looked back at Joe Gorga, and was like, "Yo, bro." Be careful, man's is coming. And as much as Demi makes a good point to, to what I'm about to say, but if it were me <laughs> in this scenario, I would be trying to stop the man that's charging, not brace the man who doesn't see the man charging. So many things are already at a high tension mm -hmm. and people are already upset. People are already mm -hmm. calling each other names. People are already mm -hmm. yelling. Moments before this, Melissa was on her knees saying, we praise you. Please stop hurting our family. Like <laughs> That shit was funny. <laughs> <laughs> she was she ready to kiss the ring. <laughs> yes, I just want to say that. When she's like, I'll even kiss the ring. And I think she like actually makes contact with her fingers. And yes. Teresa has such a look of disgust. She's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Because, you know, like their family dynamic is so broken here. Yeah. Um, their so children are affected. Hella unfortunate. Their yeah. children are affected. Mm -hmm. their and their children are were weaponized against each other. Mm -hmm. Like that song where I don't I don't remember which child it was. Was Gia. it Gia mm -hmm. who was singing that unfortunate song that has been memed throughout the ages? Like that's embarrassing. Oh, and <laughs> that was so embarrassing and I'm sure that poor girl is embarrassed about that now I think she's like what 21 mm -hmm. 22 years old or some shit like that she's like that was embarrassing for her um I mean it's iconic tv but I'm sure like she's like oh god everybody sees me as like an eight-year-old kid singing this damn song and even Melissa weaponizes her kids against Teresa she's like you know those are my kids and they don't need to be around you and you're poison and da 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 and so, like, they weaponize their kids and access to their children against each other. And it's really, really unfortunate. And it reminds me of what Kathy does to Kyle. And Kyle's been talking about this recently, mm -hmm. about how when Kathy's upset with Kyle, she will, oh, you can't talk to Paris. You can't talk to Nikki. What, like, one time she got disinvited to a wedding and all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's mm -hmm. like... You know, especially when you're adults, even if you have an adult children, like Paris and Nikki are clearly adults, they're married, they have kids. But when you are adults with kids, it's not okay to, like, weaponize the children against that family member. You know what I mean? 
maybe if the if that family member was abusive, you know, uh, but don't weaponize your kids. Like that's not okay. Yeah, it's caught day, up in sibling drama. Yeah, like that's their family. You know, family deserves to be with family. Like they deserve to have their own separate relationship with that person outside of their parents. And if we're really going to be adults about it, like beef with your brother if you want to beef with your brother that's your brother that's your right but keep your kids out of it at this point i agree because you're teaching them then to go against that family member and they are not sure why other than the things that you have said Mm -hmm. and throughout the show and i think this happens after this fight but they're they're that relationship between Teresa and melissa is strained for a while before it gets better and i think even now it's still strained in 2024 absolutely yeah, um, they do not have the greatest of relationships. Even when they were at the um, the, what you call it, the uh, housewives girls trip, like even though they really did stick together, like, like Teresa was explaining like why she was beefing with Melissa at the in the beginning, and even now Teresa's like, I'm not even gonna bring it up because it's not important to do that because like I have my opinion and she has hers and she's never gonna admit it, so I'm just not gonna say anything about it. And it's like, it just yeah. definitely does still feel like they have tension. I don't think um Melissa and Joe went to Teresa's wedding. If I'm not mistaken, her her with her new husband, whose name I don't know because I have stopped watching Jersey since um since Teresa and Joe went to jail. But I, they, I don't think they went to her, her, her new wedding. So I think there's still a lot of tension between the two of them. Kids wouldn't know that information unless they heard it. So yeah. Teresa being the big mouth that she is, especially yeah. in the early seasons, I'm not surprised the children have such language. Mm-hmm. And again, all of this is still happening while they're re- re- while they're recording the show, while yeah. they are, while Teresa's letting out books, dropping tea on people, like she's mm-hmm. just doing a thing. So obviously she all is a, a huge root of the problem in the family dynamic and in this episode because after he calls her scum she's running to her husband um he called me scum we have to go i'm upset and we all have seen joe interact and he is definitely a hothead so Mm -hmm. richie brings up a point where although i think he should have ran to juicy joe he does bring up a point where what did you what were you hoping to accomplish by running over to your husband what did you expect him to do? He stepped out yeah. because he was upset and he didn't want to be part- participate in this anymore. And now you're dragging him back in. He's already upset about the situation. He's going to now let out that upsettingness onto onto Joe Gorga. And Joe Gorga, Joe, this is this is a lot for me. I know. Um, it's just a lot of like- of A lot the of same, Joes. A lot of Joes. Brother Joe. G. <laughs> like, it's just a lot of stuff. Too much. They have the same initials. They uh, really do. <laughs> Brother Joe. And they have the same build, too. They, they basically do. Two stocky dudes. Stocky short dudes. And for Joe Gorga to be called a midget by Joe Juji, uh, by Juicy Joe is crazy. Yes. <laughs> it's like, bro, y'all are the same height. <laughs> like, get out of here. Like, stop playing. So, you know, Brother Joe isn't going to get run down by anybody. He even admits that he has hatred for this man for 10 yeah. plus years because yeah. of how he reacts and how he's been a wedge in the relationship with his sister and so his parents. and his parents at this point joe um had no relationship with his parents and Teresa and juicy joe had a better relationship and they would tell their parents oh brother joe is too busy working to to take care of y'all too busy working to do this or you know lean on like we're the better couple to them at mm-hmm, some point mm-hmm. and it's just unfortunate because their parents were older their parents were going through health problems yeah and again he just seems like a huge wedge yeah all of us are seeing that the actual problem and the actual wedge is Teresa. yeah <laughs> and rich makes such a great point like after the whole altercation goes down and um and everybody's in their respective rooms and stuff like that he's just like she will not take any accountability for what happened whatsoever. She will not. And in a way, I do agree with with what Maury is saying about like, you know, now was not the time to run to your husband and say that stuff. But at the same time, it's like, that's my husband. If somebody calls me scum, I'm running to my backup. Like I'm running to the person who gives me emotional support and I'm going to tell him what's good. 
But I do agree that then was not the time to have that conversation with him because, like Maury said, he was drinking, he was tight, he was already having a conversation with um Rosie saying, like, oh, I just need one excuse to pop him and to do all this stuff and a whoop de whoop. Yep. So it was just like it was it was a bad mix waiting to happen, honestly. It was just like one thing on top of the other. And it was just a bomb waiting to explode. So it was like everything that could have gone wrong in that situation did go wrong, unfortunately. And one thing that I I kind of wanted to bring up is like, Teresa has this like weird sense of loyalty where she keeps yeah. commenting to um her brother, like, you know, you you go to a stranger and you tell them all these things, but you go against the family. And it's like, I, I what I assume is that she's talking about Melissa. That's her, that's his wife. Like, that's his wife. Like, what are you talking about? There comes a point where there is a hierarchy in a person's life. You know what I mean? And when you're unmarried and you're with the family, it's your parents, it's your siblings, whatever. But when you branch off and you have a wife and kids, the most important person in your life is now your wife and kids. And it's not to say that your siblings and your parents, it's like, oh, fuck them. Like, I, I never knew them. They wasn't shooting with me in the gym. That's not the way that it is at all. But I have a certain, I have more loyalty to my spouse than I would to my I don't know. It depending on the situation, I would have more loyalty to my spouse than I would my immediate family because we're married now. We're a unit. Like, you know, like my my spouse's parents, they like to comment on stuff and they like to say things and not to say that they're abusive or anything like that in any way, but they come off as rude sometimes. And my spouse has to be like, you can't speak to her like that. You're my parents, but you can't you can't say these types of things to my wife. This is my wife. This is the person that I chose to make a life with. This is the person that I chose to have my kids. You cannot talk to my spouse in that way because they are an extension of me. And yeah. Teresa seems to understand that for herself when it comes to her and Juicy, but she does not seem to understand that when it comes to her brother. She's a, And I feel like, girl, it's not because you don't get it. It's because you do not like Melissa. And just say that. I feel like half the things that they're arguing about would be resolved if Teresa would just say, fuck your wife. I yeah, don't like that bitch. Think about it. Facts. It's just say you don't like her. And we could be like, okay, we understand what the beast is about. It's because you don't like her. Not because you feel like your brother's being disloyal. It's because you think that his wife is a hoe. <laughs> like, and even... Simple as that. Yep, and... I don't think this is the first partner that uh, brother Jill has had that she's had a disagreement with. I think he was engaged before and that relationship didn't work out or he had some relationship before and that relationship didn't work out because of how aggressive Teresa is. Teresa is territorial when she's yeah. doing her cookbook, when she is talking about her brother, when she's talking about her husband or when she's talking about her children, it's always mine, 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 me, me, me. I, I, I. It's a lot mm. of first person statements, which mm. makes, again, the whole dynamic difficult because there are more than just your thoughts involved. Yeah. Um, I don't think she realized the strain that she was putting on the relationship between Gia and brother Joe, Gia being Teresa's um, daughter and brother Joe's niece. That makes it hard because, you know, she started like to really miss him and you basically caused such a wedge that he wasn't in your life which means he wasn't in her life mm -hmm. and it was just sad the way that this whole thing turned out and yeah. the retreat had good intentions it was originally planned with cousin rosie eh. it did it did okay so rosie oh, no. was barely involved in the drama i think rosie i believe that around. she had good intentions yes she did she did and i think that she i think i believe she came to Teresa with we got to do something and then Teresa's mm -hmm. like well here's the thing that we can do Mm -hmm. but either way like i i think it started off with good intentions i think that rosie wanted to resolve uh issues i think Teresa wanted to establish dominance mm -hmm. i think she wanted to say i'm gonna set the record straight here is who i believe should be on my side here's why you're wrong if you're not 
And obviously yeah. going in with that mindset to a conflict resolution, team building retreat is not where it's going to be. No, not at all. <laughs> so fight happens. And I think the funniest thing in this fight is not the fact that the fight's actually happening, but the fact that Brother Joe had black hairspray on because his hair was so thin and that yeah. black hairspray got on everybody and nobody knew what it was. And that was Brother a lie. <laughs> that was a that was a bold faced lie. Melissa knew. And she I'll did. tell you why Melissa knew. Because after everybody had broke up, Melissa ran to him with his hat and put his hat on his head. She knew. Now that's a real chick. I didn't see that. She was out here protecting her husband. She didn't want him to be embarrassed in these streets. But she, as soon as she saw what it was, she was like, oh, that's my husband and his bald head. Let me go make sure that America doesn't see that bald head. That's exactly what she did. <laughs> he does but look good was, bald now. He does. He does yeah. look good. That's what I'm saying, yo. If you bald in, get rid of it. A lot of guys look good with no hair. I get it. It's a Thanks. part of your masculinity. I understand. Because if I was bald, I would be sad too. But hey, own it. Get buff. Have strong eyebrows. Make sure your smile is cute. And you won't be out here. Girls Getting love bitches. Mr. Clean. Girls love them and Mr. Clean. Yes. We love Mr. Clean. <laughs> Mr. Clean be looking good. Terry Crews. Terry Crews doesn't have any hair and he looks good. Get out of here. We love ourselves a bald, a bald king. So rock it, Joe. We love it. Um, but that was funny. She definitely knew and he knew. And they're just like, what is this tar? Oh my God, it's everywhere. <laughs> the acting skills, 100. Ten out of Oscars ten. for everybody. Ten Oscars, ten. Oscars, Oscars. It was great. And then when everybody went into the separate rooms after the fight, the conversations that were being had should have not been had. Everyone should have went home. And I felt like people were trying to press them to start talking to each other, them being Brother Joe and Teresa. Mm -hmm. um, and Joe is not really in the mood for that. And people are now upset about crying. that. Yeah. He was. That's he was a, hysterically crying. That's a lot. That's for a, a hard dude thing that to do. big, he probably don't cry like that a lot. <laughs> like, that is a hard thing to do. He is a mm -hmm. machismo Italian mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Now crying on television about a family dynamic that... With his wife. Yeah. That's crazy. That shit is crazy. And this is also yeah. the scene where Melissa is saying that um, Saddam Hussein had a brother and... Bro, <laughs> that doesn't mean out he's a of person. pocket. Out of pocket. Now, <laughs> now... Teresa is a lot of things, bro. She is a lot of things. But Saddam Hussein, she is not. And Melissa was out of pocket for that comment, bro. She was. She was. This was not the time to do that. And, and family dynamics are hard. Their own um, their own parents don't have relationships with their siblings. So yeah. this is like something that uh, Rosie and Kathy's mother doesn't want to enable she tells them get right with them get do what you can family mm -hmm. is important because mm -hmm. she didn't have a relationship with her siblings for almost most of her life by the time yeah. that she met them yeah. and to see it repeated must hurt the parents terribly so it's yeah. it's a terrible like torn family dynamic that i hope that they'll improve but that fight was insane somebody got yeah. lifted off the floor um juicy joe kept saying you want to suck on my nuts because you keep biting them yeah that was crazy <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see any of the biting. There was but no he biting. Just and and at, at one point, I'm like, yo, Maury, did he just say that he was biting his nuts? <laughs> like, what yes, kind did. of fight is that? We don't get down like that in New York City. I don't know if that's a Jersey thing. <laughs> that's not how we give it up. Yes, he did. Not at all. Our next fight, uh, I, I, I don't want to say favorite because of how bad this fight was but i will say most entertaining and this is pillow talk i know everybody knew this was coming up pillow talk housewives of atlanta with candy apollo peter chuck all them people was just oh brandon how could i forget brandon everybody oh, brandon. was scrapping that night now, I I don't know. I, I have a lot of varying opinions about what happened. Um, and so it might seem that I will contradict myself a lot, but there was just so many things 
And I don't even know where to start. Maury, you got a place to start with this one? Now you playing with your cat during the podcast. <laughs> Listen, it's the only way to keep him quiet. <laughs> it was working. Um, but now, you know, now we can talk about where to, where to start with this. Where to start with this. It's definitely Nini's behavior. This whole Bro. thing is fueled by, fueled by two things. Nini's behavior and alcohol. Yeah. So as you see again. Uh, 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 hold on. I would say Nini's behavior. Kenya. And yes. then alcohol. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm not saying Kenya was in the right. We'll dive she into Kenya. She was not in the right. She was she not was in the right. right. She, um, uh, she was semi. She had her toe in the right. I'll give her that. She was, she was kicking the right a little bit. But she was mostly in the wrong. I agree. And you see the evil motif of of alcohol once more. I mm-hmm. will say that Nini's behavior was noticeably off. And it was so weird. Yeah, and you know, I'm not the uh, how do I how do I best word this? I think that Nini can be very stern when mm-hmm. she wants to get her point across. So naturally, because she wears like she she's has a tough exterior, she just comes off tougher. Yeah. Um, or more stern. In this case, she was coming off stern, goofy. pacing, rude. Yeah. She was out of breath because she was talking so fast. And pa- <laughs> it was the pacing. And I was telling Maury, like, I've seen this episode so many times. I saw it when it aired. I've done plenty of different rewatches of this episode. And I told her that I could never figure out what's going on with her outfit because she never sits still long enough for me to look at it. (laughs) (laughs) Because there were so many things happening with the lingerie piece that she was wearing. And I'm like, I can't properly see it because the lady won't sit down. So she was babbling. She was rambling. And everybody was saying it. And girl, if you're not going to say it, I'm going to say it. I won't say that it was a drug ass, but... It may have been the drug ass, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know. I really her don't want to say off. it. Yeah, that's, uh, we've seen her for many seasons. I actually miss having her presence in the show. Me too. I love her. She was Nini. a character. She, yeah. she meant everything she did, and I like mm-hmm. that for her. Um, But, you know, seeing her so much, even in every, like, almost every stage of emotion, frustration, sad, yeah. marriage good, marriage bad. Like, we've seen so much of her. Mm-hmm. This was not who she was. It was not a... No, this was, like, completely off from who she is as a person. Mm-hmm. And it, it wasn't that it was necessarily bad. It was just, like... Concerning. Nini, yeah, she's so composed. I can't even say that because she'd be going off. But mostly she can be really composed. Even when she's going off, she is never going to get out of her character. You know exactly who she is. So you'll yeah. never see her like lunge at someone and try to beat them up. At least now. I know that she says that she's done some things in her younger years when she was in her 20s and stuff like that. You can't blame her for that. She was young. She was a single mom. Yeah, and she, she went through do. a lot of a lot of stuff. But when you see her on the, on the show... She will give you a verbal lashing, but she never seems like erratic. Yeah. And she seemed a little erratic tonight. Like she never seems like she never seems like emotionally off or anything like that. Um, she mostly has her cool and that night she looked a little not herself. And you know, there could have been it couldn't it could have been a multitude of things. Maybe it wasn't the drogas. Um, because I definitely don't want to put that on her back if that wasn't the case. But that's just kind of what it seemed like. She was just so bananas, and I, I don't know. It was a weird night. It started it off weird and ended weird. Yep, a hundred percent. And she was like that the whole way through. Mm-hmm. I think towards the end, she once after like two and a half, five arguments, um, is when she was like, "All right, I'm fucking tired." Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When now she you're threw tired. Confessional, and she was like, girl. and all she could say was like, "I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired." Now you're tired. Like, now girl, you're, I believe you're like tired. You need a nap. <laughs> yeah, all this energy you done harbored within everybody now. She needs a nap. But let let's get into it. So, mm-hmm. first off, Kenya, and I try not to be biased with Kenya because I genuinely <laughs> just do not enjoy her presence. I, I enjoy her much more now, these days, now that I think that she's calmed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. But her first couple of seasons, bro, me and Kenya was not rocking with each other. And this is this is part of the reason why. First, she came late. 
Nene was not vibing with that. She was upset. Was she a little bit more upset than she needed to be? Yeah. I think so. I mean, Kenya was late. She was late. It was what it was. I don't think that... I do think that she should have sent, like, a text message or a call or something like that. But it definitely was not as big of a deal as Nene was making it out to be. Then we get to um, Chuck and Natalie. Chuck and Natalie, who I, I also... Oh, is it Christopher? Mm -hmm. The who was Chuck? Chuck was the dude that Candy used to date. Oh, you're right. You see all these all these people that showed up during that season. I just couldn't Crazy. get. I couldn't. I couldn't. That episode had like fifteen people. Fifteen like side characters. Like who are all you people? You're right. So it was Christopher. So Natalie and Christopher, who I also didn't really vibe with. Um, Natalie is saying, "Oh, Kenya says that I'm a common law wife." Da da da. Chris then gets up out of his seat. Now, this is where I will say that Kenya was right. Chris was being wildly disrespectful. He came off the gate being disrespectful. He turns to her and what I think is going to be like, don't talk about my wife moment. He goes, so I don't know what kind of medication that you're on. And yeah. I'm just like, how do you start a speech in that way? If I was Kenya, I would have been upset too. So I can't say that Kenya was at fault for that. Like, he really did come out the gate swinging. But yeah. this is where I disagree with Miss Kenya. Because then she gets up out of her seat. And as a Black person, you know never to get up out of your seat. Because as soon as you do, all bets are off. Because mm -hmm. that seems like an attack. Even if you're not bum rushing me, if you get up out of your seat, that means you that you're prepared. Prepare for? Yeah, you're preparing to do some shit. Like, you know, we don't really see that in like in the other housewives and stuff like that because they're majority like white and stuff. But in black culture, we know that that's not what you do. Don't get up out of your seat. Don't start waving your fingers in my face because if there's one thing that black people love is their space is their area. They like to keep the area around them a good vibe. And once you start encroaching on that area, bro, bad things happen. So Kenya gets up out of her seat. Christopher, who again, I did not really like him from Jump, starts approaching her and says, bro, don't approach my wife like that. Because what, what were you going to do? I At this point, I will say I was okay with Christopher Maybe not grabbing her arm the way that he did, but he did like grab her arm. Yeah. And he was like, "Yo, what are you doing? Like, don't don't approach my wife like that." Honestly, I would have done the same if I saw some lady who didn't like my wife jump out of her seat and walk towards my wife like that when my wife is sitting when she's in a vulnerable position. I would have grabbed her too. Yep. Then Brandon and all his red silk glory. I did love his outfit though. Brandon looked very nice in his uh, pajama set. He, he starts getting buck with Christopher. Don't touch it like that. Don't touch it like that. I mean, like I said, this is a multi-layered thing. A lot of things went wrong. I don't think necessarily one person was at fault. Mostly Kenya. <laughs> I don't think most people were at fault. You know, um, Brandon was trying to defend his friend. or her. Yeah, Brandon was trying to defend his friend. But it was the way that Brandon was trying to defend his friend that was the problem. Because I think it took it to a uh a level that it maybe it wouldn't have gone if he had just backed up a little bit but things happened so it was what it was Peter I'm gonna gets... disagree I'm gonna disagree okay. on the on the on the principle of uh -huh. Nini was a host Mimi yes. could have controlled the entire room if she wanted she's completely capable of doing that okay I, I think that she started a lot of mess by asking a lot of shady ass questions yes and to begin with people didn't even know why they came when they first walked in they were like oh so what's this night about they it was still up in the air for them they were not expecting fast pacing jittery nini to be talking yeah. shit about everybody in a row <laughs> yeah um because one of the questions that she asked is about candy and or or it's shade towards candy in a way because todd and candy are together at this point Chuck Smith is in a room. Apparently Chuck Smith and Candy dated or fooled around or something of the sort mm -hmm. at some point. And one of the questions were, well, how would you feel? Would you be cool with um, being in the same room or knowing someone that has had relations or been with your current partner? Yeah. Shade number one. There was multiple yeah. shades going on, but that was that was a shade. I was like, was this necessary? Yeah. Um, 
It was girl for the TV. It was no, it was very it necessary. Was. She did bring good TV. She was like, I know exactly what to fucking ask, and she did it. <laughs> and she asked it. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was Kenya was minding her business and then or saying something. She wasn't minding her business. She was saying something, and Nini ended up responding with, "Don't start," because didn't you say that Natalie wasn't even really with? Christopher yeah. talking all that smack. So Nini yeah. brought that up. She already had high energy and people were confused and on edge about it. Then yeah. she starts asking shady questions, making people irate. Yeah. And then did nothing. <laughs> so irate. Yeah. Yeah. When the fight started, she did nothing. <laughs> she stood back and got tired. She <laughs> she was there orchestrating puppet mastering as fuck that episode. Yeah. Yeah. So I I blame her more than i blame kenya kenya's attitude the reactions right. were bad okay okay maureen okay okay <laughs> out here speaking truth yeah. whatever you since you got your fucking kenya. degree and everything whatever 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 all right all right whatever so i guess maury is right i'll concede my point it's just i really don't like kenya <laughs> i'm so sorry kenya i enjoy you now girl you and me could be cool now but Back then, I I was not feeling her. Okay, Maury. Maury is right. <laughs> Nini was doing a lot of pot stir stirring, I will oh, admit. God. She she was out of pocket the whole night when she was like, how would you feel if your man was bisexual? And then she said, Portia, you can answer this question. <laughs> Do <laughs> <Why>? it. <laughs> Just out here going <laughs> down the line. She's like, if you were in this show, I'm asking a personal question about you. It was literally the first time. You know how in... Potomac, where they did the reasonably shady title yes, thing. Yes, yes. Reminds me of that 100%. It was we like, need to stop something. playing games as housewives. Yeah. Like, the games are never good. They always go left. And it's just like, stop playing the games and stop going on boats. Just two the two, two things that you should stop doing. Yeah. Okay. Just... Maury is right. Maury is right. <laughs> and the thing for me with after, the fight happened quickly. You know, it did it escalated quickly so christopher stood up then kenya stood up because kenya is very independent and confrontational yes. she's not going to let some man stand up and talk down to her so she's gonna yes get yes um she got up now she's charging towards not charging but she's walking and talking towards natalie pretty quickly mm -hmm. um christopher ends up grabbing kenya's arm brandon ended up getting up People started pushing Brandon back. Poor Brandon got yeah. his ribs cracked. He got punched yeah. in the face. He got fucked yeah. up by Apollo and Peter at the same time. <laughs> yeah. They were <laughs> double teaming on that ass. Yeah, I was shook. Oh, man. And, I mean, yeah. I it, like, and they had him lines. on his back. Like, it was not cool. Because it went from they were all getting into a fight to it low-key looked like a jumping. Jumped, yeah. Like, he was on his back. He was on a pillow at that. So you could get up from a hard surface. It's hard to get up out of a bed or out from a pillow. Mm -hmm. Or I think it was like a beanie bag that he was on. Like they had him on the soft surface. Dude's not getting up. Apollo was straddling him, beat him up. Uh, I think I, I think I saw, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that um Peter had his hand around his throat at some point. Because I think Peter had his hand around his throat and then shoved him back. And then that's when Apollo got on top of him. It was just so bad. At the I end of the Paul, day, Apollo grabbed. Either way, the man's throat was grabbed. We saw yeah, it. Yeah, it was bad. His throat was grabbed and pushed. Like they shoved yeah. him into the beanie bag, which is meant yeah. for you to sink into. It was yeah. It was a jumping. It, it turned it into a jumping really quickly. And that's because, yeah. you know, they stick together and it, it's it's clicky. You're, you're honestly, I don't even think it was that. I think Apollo. Ugh, I think Apollo had like a flashback or something. I feel like it was low key like a PTSD moment. You I know, like that. you know when you hear like of veterans when okay, you know this is not the case of all veterans, but I'll give you an example. So you know how much I love Criminal Minds. Mm -hmm. Um, there's this episode where they have this veteran and he heard like a shooting or something like that, and it just brought him right back to the war. And so he ends up um 
I guess I'll use unaliving so this doesn't get taken down or whatever. He ends up unaliving like a bunch of people because he feels like he's back in the war. And he was in like the psychosis state for like days on days where he That's was hard. trying to protect a child that wasn't really there. And he was like, kill he was unaliving all these people because he was protecting his home. And it was just a lot of stuff. And that's not to say that everybody has PTSD like that or that even Apollo has PTSD, but it just seemed so much more aggressive than what was needed mm -hmm. because from what Apollo says, Brandon hit him in the eye I don't think I saw that happen. Maury, did you see that happen? It could have been while he was down on that beanbag. Because yeah. what uh, poor Brandon was saying was that he was beating on him like a gorilla. And I don't necessarily, yeah. I didn't see too much gorilla beating. And also just to comment on the gorilla thing really quick. Uh, as a black this, man, yeah. Yeah, this show talks about how to label black people or black women, but no one's talking about how to label black men also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't want to label a black man uh, aggressive gorilla granted he was beating his ass yeah he yep. a lot of things he should not have done mm -hmm. um but that doesn't mean you call him a gorilla yeah uh, doesn't sit right with me he's he's light-skinned but he's still black like that mm -hmm. at the end of the day and yeah, he a, but he a, he a little bit of a bigger dude you know yeah so that's that's, that's a little rude but he, that was, was the like, analogy that was used yeah um so it could have been during that moment because honestly at that point he was just getting crowded by everybody and mm -hmm. there were just fists and body parts flying yeah it was bad um and another thing and i know it's gonna make me seem like a kenya hater <laughs> but another thing is i also and i think maybe this is something that we should talk about is how atlanta in particular deals with gay black men yeah but Kenya who I believe I won't put no sexuality on Brandon but I believe he's gay but there's something about the way that Kenya talks about black men sometimes that I don't appreciate and this is something true of like some a lot of the housewives in Atlanta especially during that early se uh, earlier seasons but she goes like oh you know like Apollo is out here fighting like he's fighting for his virginity yeah and I'm like why would mm. you say yeah like that's not that's not something to say like that's yeah. that's a really disgusting comment like but and Kenya goes low she does she goes low and for some reason they like to use sexuality as an insult especially when it comes to men and black men at that and it doesn't happen often but it happens enough that I think even Andy took offense to some of the things that were being said mm -hmm. um it's just not okay uh and let's be real this is not me defending Apollo at all Apollo was a thousand percent wrong for all of his actions even if he did get punched in the eye the way that he says that he did, he did overkill on Brandon. It wasn't, it went from I'm defending myself to I'm I'm getting you. I'm getting mm -hmm. you in any way that I can get you. He went on full autopilot mode. That man left his body, okay? He was no longer there. He had disassociated. He was gone. Yeah. And he was just on seeing red. Yeah, and that's not okay. You're a grown-ass man. You have your freedom. You have your kids. You have your wife. Control yourself. It wasn't that serious. Like, I could understand if you punched him in the face a couple of times and I kept pushing, you know, whatever. Dudes get into fights. But he did the utmost, and it was just not okay. But on that same vein, I feel like Kenya said a lot of disparaging things, especially about Apollo and his time in prison. Like, prison... Prison assaults are a thing. That's a lot of th a thing that a lot of men go through. Yeah, you know, and I don't think it's okay to talk about it like that in a such a flippant way because this is something that happens. There are no women in prison, and sometimes the only way, especially if you're gonna be there for your whole life or for fifteen years, only way to get human contact is with another inmate. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's consensual, and sometimes it is not. And it's not okay to make light of the non-consensual happenings that happen in jail. Like, that's that's not cool. You know what I mean? But like I said, that does not absolve Apollo. Apollo was an asshole for all of that shit. Um, he was. It was a lot of it was unnecessary just, actions. Um, oh, unnecessary. And people should have went home. 
People should have went home at that time because it led into Portia other did. fights. <laughs> Poor, yes, she Portia knew. She was home. like, she said she saw spirits in people's faces, not not the demons, but the spirits. Because everything was also different came. now. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's spirit came. Home. I really do. Because the way that it it went from a little bitty situation, like it should have never escalated to the point that it escalated to. Mm-hmm. And I really think that something took root and those people. Now, was it the liquor or the whatever? We will never know. But it was something. I don't know. It was something. Like that. And what was, you know, what was the thing for me with Apollo is Phaedra saying, I don't, I just don't know where this behavior came from. This That's a Apollo, lot. Apollo can get aggressive, but, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't get this aggressive. And it's like, you know, if that was the case, I would see more shock in your face. Yeah. Phaedra can be really manipulative and might have been able to keep her cool. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is her man. They have two children together. Um, And so if that was my person acting that way, you know, I'd be a little shocked. Um, But here's the thing, Maury. Here's the thing about Miss Phaedra, Miss Fefe. She is Southern Belle. You know, them chicks never see, never let anyone see them sweat. Yeah. We have seen this woman lie out of her teeth. We know she is lying a thousand percent. <laughs> and she looks cool as a cucumber. She is an attorney, child. <laughs> like That's she, true. She, she, I think that, and not to say that you're wrong, but I think another layer of it is that she knows how to keep herself cool. And perfect example, when Apollo goes to jail for the second time, and he With shows up, yeah. And he shows up and is doing all that mess in her house. Uh, a woman like me, I would have been crying. I would have been screaming. Get him away from me. Call the cops. Do, 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 do. I'm not, let's be real, I'm a little bit of a punk. Couldn't be me. But her, she was cool. She was calm. She was collected. And I know for a fact she was scared. Because she yep. says that she was scared. But on her face, as it was happening, she was deadpan no emotion she was just like you're gonna get yourself through the situation and you'll feel your feelings later but you're Mm -hmm. not feeling them now and I think she just has a history of emotionally departing from situations and so maybe that's why she wasn't looking as shocked because she was like girl you need to put your lawyer face on you need to back up from the situation emotionally deal with it and then you can feel your feelings later I can see that I do agree with you. I mean, come on. It's about, you know, your man. Like, yeah, this isn't like, I wouldn't say that he's prone to getting this aggressive how, or or that that feisty. However, this can't be new to you, girl. This can't. It wasn't. <laughs> Don't it wasn't. act like you'd have never seen this side. It uh, wasn't. And that was know... like my biggest problem with Phaedra on the show. I think she was good entertainment. I think she had a really great facade. I just hated the way that we, she knew that we knew she was lying. And she, mm-hmm. she acts as if we weren't. I felt like I was being gaslit in real time. Just... She's a lawyer. Of course she was gaslighting <laughs> us. That's, that, that's the first thing time. they teach you in law school. It's to gaslight the peoples. Like... You're not wrong. She's good at it. She you is. Retain her if we ever need her, I'll take it. You're going to retain her? Do you You're got the five grand? Because you know Sheree couldn't pay it. That's the five grand. Yeah, oh. wasn't it five? I could be lying. You know oh, when me. she did that thing for Sheree. Don't get me a lion. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. But listen, Phaedra, I'd be a really good pro bono case if I ever have, if I ever need you. Love. Um, I'm a little poor. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that that's like the, when he starts getting into that second fight or tries to and people are stopping. Bro. It goes on <laughs> to the next fight. And at this point, people should have went home. So the new fight starts because Candy um, was confronting Natalie, who was saying that Natalie and Christopher knew uh, Todd through their friend, who's now Todd's ex. And that dynamic of the relationship was unfortunate because he cheated on her, broke her heart, and implied that he may be an opportunist, which lines up with what Mama Joyce has been saying about him Mm -hmm. at that time and what the streets were talking honestly i think mm. it was just miss joyce and miss joyce miss joy loves the streets the miss joyce was the streets. she was mm-hmm. she was putting it out there on the streets she was she was um, the streets, definitely so you know and then and cynthia went to how had a dinner with natalie and they were talking about it mm-hmm. and that's where that conversation was brought up yeah. now cynthia feels bad because she was not expecting that this was going to happen and she wants mm-hmm. to clarify the reason why she was 
bringing it up in the first place is because of Mama Joyce. Now, as mm-hmm. we mentioned in our last episode, Mama Joyce is toxic. Mm-hmm. So now Mama Joyce is playing puppeteer without mm-hmm. even playing puppeteer on purpose. Right. <laughs> all kinds of mess. So and Candy's she ain't even upset. In the room. Exactly. And Candy's upset because now she just wants to clarify what was said and why. And everyone's like, well, you're only focusing on the bad things we said. And Candy's like, I know the good. She gets the good. She sees the good. She's with the good. What are you mm-hmm. talking about? I want mm-hmm. to know. Now, yes. a whole fight breaks out there where Mallory, Cynthia's sister, who is 100% Todd. at fault for this situation. Yeah. 100%. Push because him. why did you push him like that? She shoved him. This was not a, oh, back up, like, don't fight Peter. This was a, was a oh, I want to get involved. Yeah. And she shoved her. Now, personally, Candy says that Mallory also shoved her. I don't think I saw that. I'm not going to say that Candy is lying, but I'll just simply say that I didn't see it. But either way, the way that she shoved my man, there's nothing else to talk about. And Mm -hmm. I don't like how everybody started making fun of her, like, oh, my man, my man. I'm sorry. But my significant other, if you shove them, we're scrapping. There's nothing else to say, like... I'm also very protective over my significant other. I'm also very mama bear when it comes to my significant other. You're not going to try to play them. You can play in my face all you want. I really don't care. But when it comes to the people that I love, I will go ballistic over them. So I can't say that I blame Candy for the reaction that she had, especially when like Peter and Mal are all getting her her face. And Mm -hmm. like she said, she's a tiny lady. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Black people will always tell you, do not get into my space. That is a threat to me. And other Black people know that. And I feel like they weaponize that against each other, knowing it's going to set you off because I'm in your space. And it just it just went left. Like, it was so bad. But one thing that me and Maury can agree on is that Candy has never looked better than when she was screaming in their faces. Oh. Candy... Candy was looking real good. <laughs> Candy was looking real good. But she was screaming in the back, like, I will track you in this bitch. I was <laughs> like, was yeah, like- Candy. Drag them. <laughs> she was mad. And I I Spicy. fortunate. But when she looks mad, it's like, damn, whose throat was she trying to step on next and can it be me? Right. It's and she's so short. I'm tall. I'm damn near six feet. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, wow, little tiny feisty lady, how you doing? It's right. Just, it was it's just so cute. I can I see why it. Todd likes her. And and when she's upset, she gets upset. Like it's quick. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. And because yeah. she's an independent woman, she cannot be pulled away from this mindset now. Yeah. So Todd trying to stop her. She's I don't give a fuck about what you gotta say. I'm gonna <laughs> fuck about what everybody gotta say. Fuck out my way. I've made up my mind. I'm upset about it now. And I'm going to kick her ass. <laughs> and I'm going to beat her ass and drag this bitch in her words. So poor Todd is out here just trying to be the man that he is. And I think we should do like an episode on successful housewife dynamics because mm-hmm. it, it gets talked about in Atlanta that Todd not making as much money as Candy makes him feel inferior. So he feels mm-hmm. like he has to keep up. And mm-hmm. I feel like that same dynamic existed between Phaedra and Apollo, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um but, you know, you could see where he's like, I'm the man, let me take care of this. And you could see where she's like, and I said what I said, I'm making up yeah. my mind because she's an yeah. independent, successful woman. Yeah. And he is trying to show, you know, that he's the man in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, So when him and Peter are talking and Peter's like, this is real conversation here, I would take that as, and what the fuck I'm saying ain't. So, right, I would have taken that as a threat as well. I yeah. would have been like, and hey, you could get it too, Peter. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Like, sir, (laughs) don't let the shortness fool you. You can be rated E for everyone. I could be you. I could be your sister. I could be your (laughs) sister-in-law. Everybody in this room could get it. Like, stop playing with me. Yeah, so it's a it's a good time to uh, to be candy in that moment, man. Yeah, I guess actually it's not a good time to be candy in that moment. It's a good time to watch it. Um, It was a good time to watch candy in that moment. It was. Yeah. And that's like, probably wow. a horrible thing to say, but Candy was just looking great. Yeah. She was looking great. She was sounding great. I was real biased towards Candy in that moment. I don't really care what she did next, but as long as she kept looking and sounding the way that she did, Candy, you know, girl, 
that's what's up amazing Mm -hmm. um speaking of how people look when they are angry in a confrontation or physical altercation Jax from Vanderpump Rules Jesus Christ that moment so there's there's a lot of comments I have this is a really good um season for Vanderpump Rules I think the early season seasons one and two Mm -hmm. are who um to start I don't know why Stassi keeps trying to celebrate her birthday with these chaotic people why because then who would she celebrate with herself and her dog there would be no one left you are right everyone she knows is chaotic including her parents the only one who's not chaotic is her little brother (laughs) he is a well put together young pastor he is what was he like seven or eight or ten or something when we first meet him and he's just like you just need to stop cheating on my sister wise words <laughs> wise words from the child <laughs> he is a well put together young pastor his preachings can go across nations right he, <laughs> he, he lets you know about boards. yourself yeah he can he needs so, a platform he's the only one she he's the only one that she could have celebrated her birthday with mm-hmm. because everybody else has lost their mind like yeah. wild for context it's her birthday and throughout her birthday, if you take a shot every time she said the word birthday, you would be drunk by right. then. She's and like, it's my motherfucking birthday. Whole thing. And I get it. It's a day about her. And Stassi relishes in the moments that are days about her because mm-hmm. she's had a lot of insecurities in the relationships that he, that she has had in the past where she mm-hmm. wasn't considered or it wasn't about her and it should have been about her. So, of mm-hmm. course, she's going to take advantage of every moment that it's about her. She's mm-hmm. also in her early 20s. Who wouldn't want it to be about mm-hmm. them? Um, but you know she's a, she has a little bit of like a, a narcissistic narcissistic point of view in those first couple seasons. Yeah, um, she grew a lot. She did a lot, a lot. She did. I liked that for her. The thing with Jax is that he's so he's ten years her senior. Mm-hmm. He's Old toxic. Man. He's so a man toxic. child, and yeah. he crashes her party that he was disinvited to. And again, we all know the hold, if you watch Vanderpump, the hold that Stassi had on Jax was wild. That was a grip. That was a right. grip. Um, I'm not sure if she would expect anything less, not necessarily saying that it's on her, but the dynamic between them has always been toxic. And so mm-hmm. for Jax to show up at her birthday party uninvited felt on par for his character. It did. <laughs> I was not surprised. However, the escalation that ended up happening was... She wasn't really expecting him. Now, everybody's like, bro, what the fuck? He's arguing with people. He just came in with the static, with a very mm-hmm. nice sweater. I thought that sweater was really cute. It was really cute. I really liked it. Yeah, I need to I would have wanted a it. different color, but it was like a nice gray. sweater. Yeah, I would have liked it in a gray or like a black or something. But Yeah, with those nice marble buttons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love those types of sweaters. Yeah. So it was a nice sweater and he came in there. <laughs> Fighting. anyway so that's what it was nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it was like wow look at that nice sweater but his attitude not nice and at no. this time Stasi had invited frank her other love interest which apparently she was dabbling in him while she was still with jacks according and you know to what you Kristen. know what speaking of that because because we we definitely did just watch this scene right before we um started the pod before we started filming today, mm-hmm. and I just think that it's so hypocritical for Kristen to be screaming up in in Frank's face like, "Oh, you was messing with Stassi two days before um she broke up with Jax and da 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 da, and that's disgusting in here." Anyway. We're going to just put it out there. Cheating is cheating. It's always wrong. It, you know, whatever. That's not what we're talking about. But what like, we're talking Kristen about had is... Kristen with Jax. Thank you. Thank you. Because why are you over here judging Frank when you were sleeping with her man while they were together? And Good you're her question. best friend. Like, get out of here, Kristen. Kristen, Kristen, Kristen. <laughs> so Kristen, as you have seen, my BBD enemy, queen, Kristen. <laughs> obviously, we all have a housewife that we don't enjoy. On the Kenya list is also the Kristen list. Bro. Demi. And I get it. I get it. I'm not a big fan of Kristen, um, but she, she, Kristen she was hypocritical. Messy. Fuck. Messy. 
She could have minded and her business here. And she's low key deranged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She a little, she a little scoop the woo, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, honestly, we all should be yelling at Jax at this moment. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. There were so many people wrong because at some point when Stassi gets up to throw liquid at Tom's face, because he told her to shut the fuck up or something, Tom pours beer on her. Frank is now yelling at Jax. And then Frank and Jax at some point get into an argument about who's worse. So while they're both questionable cast members in the show, I see no difference between the two. Frank, I believe, took a lot of advantage uh, or took advantage of Sassy because he yeah, tried to prove disgusting. he is. He tried to prove that he was um he can establish dependency by defending her in this mm-hmm. moment then mm-hmm. turns around and records him having sex and tries to give her money for it or like a blackmail her or bribe her or whatever wild wild, wild um stuff. so it's like you ain't shit and don't try yeah. to make it seem like you actually care about saucy here you and we, we were really like jackson these early seasons but jackson wasn't yeah. doing that like you yeah. know jackson just doing getting his own pregnant stuff, in, like... in vegas and lying about it <laughs> and taking his shirt off <laughs> and taking his shirt off to fight and you know it's it's just like everyone could have went home at this point and you right. see the again the evil motif of alcohol in in girl here. that was more than alcohol <laughs> now i i i i kind of didn't want to say it when it came to miss leaks earlier but i'm gonna say it with my chest for these people it was the drogas okay <laughs> They was know, taking that like cocaina. It. Yes, they were. <laughs> that is wild. That type of behavior is not alcohol. It wasn't the beer. It wasn't the tequila. Okay? Don Julio was not making them turn up in this manner. It was the cocaina. They got that stuff. They had it. They was doing it. And it was turning buck wild. Stop yeah. it. Stop yeah. it. Stop it. Get out of here, people bro. People started taking off their shirts. And honestly, you know, Jax takes off his shirt. It's He, he looks great. That's just what he does. And I <laughs> I would like to applaud He's Tom. a model. <laughs> He's a model, yeah. I would like to applaud uh, Tom Sandoval for taking off his shirt with no muscle definition. That we is... need to find, not to cut you off, I know I do that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, We need to find a good nickname for Sandoval because I don't really want to call him Tom Sandoval. I feel like he doesn't deserve his name at this point. And so <laughs> I low-key want to call him Run with the Mustache. <laughs> 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 now, if you want to do that too, that's up to you. But just like Juan Dixon roommate is Juan Dixon roommate, uh-huh. he won't be Run with the Mustache. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of words. I'm gonna just say the mustache because honestly, that mustache <laughs> is low key, low key iconic. There's, that mustache is horrible. It's 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 a staple at this point, man. I I don't understand. Oh god. Um, but yeah, mustache takes off his shirt with no muscle definition, and I was like, None. you know, I appreciate your energy. Um, I will I will take it. And that that whole thing was just chaotic. People were getting it was. Into for no reason. And it wasn't even real birthday. fights. I don't think anybody connected a punch, bro. They were just out there yelling in the streets with their shirt off. Like, I've never seen something more disturbing in my life. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. four to five or three to five, whatever, grown men in the streets, no shirt on, yelling about some girl that you piped. Mm-hmm. What is happening? What are our priorities? Just chaos. They really did appeal to the to the demographic because I was in there like, wow, what is happening? And <laughs> I can't play next. Just <laughs> like currently, my friends are anywhere between like 26, 27 to 32 years old. And I can't imagine my friends right now running around in the streets, taking their shirt off yeah. and fighting over a girl. Like, yeah. I would look at them like, don't you have bills to pay? <laughs> like, don't you have like a, I don't know, rent or something? Like, we don't have anything else to do but then to fight in the streets with our shirt off about yeah. a girl? Not even some real stuff <sighs> about a girl. Yeah. And the girl wasn't going nowhere because, again, the, the hold that Stassi had on Jax, he could have just skipped this day and he still would have got the have. <laughs> yeah, because she was right back to giving it to him right after the season ended. She went into season two, or was it season two? I don't remember. But she goes into the next season giving him the poom once again. Like, you know, good for Stassi. She, she knew where she was at. She knew what she wanted, and she stayed there. 
But Jax did not need to fight Frank in order to get that thing back. Not at all. The not thing was all. him. The thing was thinking only for him. Yeah, not at all. Um, but that's one chaotic one. Some honorable mention fights. The wig shift. <laughs> I love this the title episode. of this episode. Yes, the wig shift. The and more already happened. Our my favorite personally is the wig shift, just because Sheree is not a woman, and this is Atlanta. Sheree is not a woman. I'd want to fight. She goes to the gym. No, she, she does. does push ups. She does. I don't. She is buff. Buff she as fuck. She is buff, and it's like good. Every time you see her arms, I'm like, girl, you could beat me in arm wrestling, and I would be okay <laughs> with that. Because you deserve to. Like, she is a strong woman. And she I is. love that for Miss Sheree. She is. And, you know, this whole, the, the dynamic of this, ep- or the context for this episode is Kim uh, was talking a lot of shit. She called Nini's husband, Greg, broke. She said Nini got no class. Wild. <laughs> she said that Sheree was telling her all these things. So now Sheree's name is being lied on. And honestly, Sheree didn't always call herself the bone collector. I think she got comfortable with that as she got older or as mm-hmm. the as the seasons went on, but she's always been a bone collector. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if Sheree was actually telling Kim any of the stuff and then telling Nene something else because she'd just be going around yeah. <laughs> and dropping yeah. off bones at buildings. Like just, Not that's what she buildings. does at all the buildings. Oh God. So Honestly, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Sheree was low-key lying. And maybe she wasn't lying about everything, but she might have been lying about something because the way that they were just so gung ho about calling each other liars, I was like, "You both are lying." Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably here. shared some information, mm-hmm. especially because up until then, Sheree did not like Nini, a woman that you could invite to your party and not put her on the list, and then have her be escorted out. Is you can't say that you're above calling her names and saying that her husband is broke get out of here you was petty stand 10 tones on that like you Mm -hmm. was petty you wanted to be petty you are petty towards this woman and i'm not gonna say oh i wouldn't i don't know nini's situation enough to like say that whether or not she broke get out of here you were talking about less (laughs) what are you talking about get out of here sheree and poor nini she's in the middle of these two friends like at some point She's like, well, maybe I'm misunderstanding. I don't know who to believe. She's mm-hmm. out here trying to say maybe someday you could be friends. Yeah. Kim and Sheree. She's just in the middle of these two people. And now she's chasing them outside with heels on. Poor Lindsay Lohan. Daddy's there. Oh, <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. Daddy have made an appearance. and was <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. Daddy was not trying to be there and trying to be do all this stuff. He just wanted to be with Kim. Mm-hmm. That's it. He and to be Lindsay Lohan daddy. <laughs> yeah, he entered the chat, saw the chaos, and left the chat. It's not worth it. I don't blame him. This is not I what don't I blame him. <laughs> he was like, what is happening, bro? I just wanted to be with this He's woman. Like, who got I a helmet. did not know that Atlanta got down like this. He's minding his business. Mm-hmm. He just wanted to be with the woman wearing the helmet. Mm-hmm. And that was that was really it. And so that was yeah. a very fair honorable mention. Just because, like, think about it. The the drama in that show is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, wigs are getting shifted. It was just a little to the right, and she just needed to put a little more to the left. It was, it was... <laughs> She's like, I wasn't trying to pull it off. I was just trying to shift it a little bit. <laughs> and, like, because let's be real, this wasn't a real fight. There was no fist thrown. <laughs> but it was just the way that she reached up and just yanked on it, just a tad bit of a yanking. Tuck, tuck. I was like you know what, girl, you really did that. Like, you did it. You said what you needed to say without throwing hands, but you still had a little bit of physical contact. <laughs> uh, contact. I. It was just iconic. She shifted the wig. The wig needed to be shifted. And she's like, I'm wearing a weave. It's not going to leave my head the way that yours left yours. Yep. So ain't going to shift. It's not going to shift. Again, you see the other thing that's happening. And the and the dinner started off so positive. And then it, it just did. switched. Because Nini's like, we're here for a purpose. Let's talk about the purpose. And they have drinks. So again, just drinking. Having these serious conversations. Nobody's drinking. in the right mind, man. Yeah. No um, I guess that's the the moral of today's episode. Just have conversations without how sober. Alcohol. Please. <laughs> Stop drinking when you <laughs> confront your friends about stuff because then you start getting hype. 
Every for no time. reason. You start shifting people's wigs. Every it's twenty twenty four. My wig cannot be falling off in the streets. <laughs> I would be so upset. I would be too. But yeah, that's a, a wrap on our fourth episode. Yes. Wig shifts and more. Mm-hmm. Our next episode, we're going to talk about verbal lashings. So yeah. same same thing, just people who are quick with the tongue, and I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we did mention last time that we were going to talk about Candace this episode, but honestly, we think that that fight needs its own episode. Because mm-hmm. um, she was on the list when we were originally trying to like put things together, and we were just like, that that fight was just so devastating for Potomac and it was just so iconic that we feel like iconic in the worst ways but I feel like it needed its own episode and so we're gonna just shift that we're gonna wig shift it on a different day (laughs) Um, (laughs) but this is it honestly these are some of the most iconic fights honestly really devastating um because we should not honestly at the end of the day as as entertaining as watching people fight is, because I know that we all used to be on World Star, um, oh, we should not be putting our hands on people. And sometimes it's warranted, but oftentimes it's not. So mm-hmm. let's just not drink and maybe keep our hands to ourselves, you know? Yeah. I would never punch you in the face, Maury. I love you too much for that. Thank you. I love you too. Welcome. I wouldn't do that to you. No, we're not fighting. Especially no, not over no girl. Fact. <laughs> it's unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. <laughs> But we'll see y'all next time. Keep your wigs tight and drink water. (laughs) Don't ship your wigs now. Good night, y'all. Adios.